Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Eastern and another episode of Snook Down Farm. It's becoming a, a bit of a, a long running build this um, but I'm sure judging by the comments that you're enjoying what you've seen otherwise you wouldn't be come, keep coming back for more. Anyway, last week we looked at um, the pig style and uh, now it's time to focus on what's going on here. So let's mosey on over to the bench. Now that we've moseyed on over to the bench and you're sitting comfortably, <laughs> we can carry on with this week's video. Um, Yes, yeah, so this is the idea that I'd like to have for the building next door to the pigsty. Um, it's it's an open kind of barn. Um, it's an 88 millimeters wide, 60 millimeters deep, and approximately 65 millimeters in height. And it's all going to be made out of plastic guard. Um, Hopefully there's going to be enough room to park the farmer's vehicles and have some hay bales uh, just sitting there as well. So we'll have to see about that when it's made. Right, so I'm going to make a hard standing base um, using a little bit of sandpaper again glued to this base. It's not very big as you can see, but I've overhanged the card a little bit by about five millimeters. The reason being is it will create a small slope. That's my idea anyway. So once um, I position this um, on the layout, I can then glue this down onto the layout. But um, I'm learning the lesson from last time. I'm using some Yuhu glue here. And I'm just gonna use that to glue the sandpaper down this time. Same grit, 320 and uh, hopefully it will stick down a lot easier than it did before. So it's a little bit of a gloss on the back or something, something that's just not letting the PVA glue to it very well so I'm just going to smear this And then I'll stick that piece of sandpaper to this. Make sure I get, get it right into the corners. Try not to create any air pockets. And then I'll just glue that on there. And then we can um, paint it and do whatever we want to it now. See what I mean? I've got a, a little bit of a lip there, so I'll just fold that over. So when that's glued down onto the layer, we've got a little bit of a, a slope, as you can see. So, that's by using my measurements, I have cut my strips of plastic card. The, the plastic card is 0.5 millimeters thick, and I've also cut my four um, four millimeter I beams. So basically, I'm going to have four posts, and instead of the six uh, like there was in the photograph from last week, um, yeah, to to get the shape um, to match the drawing. Here is the drawing originally. Um, using the width, measure the center and then draw a circumference down from the center to the 11 millimeters edge and that's formed the shape and I, and I use this one to make the other one and if you put them side by side and then swap them round they're both the same. There's a little bit of difference in height but what I did is I pinched them together and then rubbed them on some sandpaper 
to smooth them down to exactly the same circumference. So, so they're done now. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just scribe um, the panelling on these. This might take a while. Um, roughly about a millimetre apart and uh, hopefully when it's painted the lines will show through but uh, we shall see on that score. It normally does on plastic. I'm now starting to glue the uprights to the ends of this barn. Um, as you probably noticed I've stuck on a, a little pad there on the base so that's going to be the concrete pad so I'm just making sure that they are 100% square to the frame I've just glued that on at the moment with a contact adhesive and you've noticed they have got a pencil line so I'm gluing them on up to the pencil line and hopefully these will all come out nice and straight once it's all glued together it's not a very big bond this as you can imagine so yet again up to the pencil line and making sure it's square to the end Also, making sure that the legs are the same length from the underside of the frame. 50 and 50 again. Yeah, 50 again. Right, and then that should sit on the base like that. As I'm putting it together, I've noticed that it's, it's not easy trying to keep um, the whole frame square in three planes. Uh, what I mean by the legs and uh, this um, top fascia of the barn. So I'm having to use some additional triangular supports to help keep um, the building square. And these bits are just left over from an old um, Daypole footbridge probably going back to the days when I built the new Hassel footbridge but um, yeah so that's because it's um, on a right angle and it's square it'll help keep this building square so I shall carry on and gluing these parts together so I'm going to start now with the other front fascia Make sure that the flush angle goes to the top. And uh, flush with the bottom and flush with the top. And then yet again we shall add those grey stiffeners to help keep it square. Right, so that's the barn framework all together now um, I think those stiffeners really did help um, to glue um, this building all nice and square so the next thing I'm doing now is add um, some roofing um, using this V groove sheet uh, it's 0 0.5 thick and um, it's already got the lines inscribed so I don't have to do any scribe work so that can be glued straight onto there um, but there's just one thing left to do I want to put uh, an edging around the top there and along here just to give it uh, a bit more gluing surface because at the moment I've got this very thin edge and uh, so if I put some um, quarter round on there all the way around the building it'll just give me a little bit more gluing surface so I shall do that first before I glue uh, this roof on 
I'm using one mil quarter round and what I've done is I've shaped it to match the shape of that edge so all I'm doing now is just offering it up and then I'll just cut it to the right length um, it's not easy, it's a little bit fiddly this Uh, I've already done one side already. Um, the best thing to do is, is to let the glue um, just rest there for a few seconds before you put the quarter round on and then it'll stick straight away. I've also added some more stiffeners in the middle to keep this beam um, square to the frame as well. Right, so I've glued the roof on, as you can see. And what I did first was I glued the roof onto the two edges um, once the quarter round had finished. So that kind of finishes that off. And then I added the quarter round along this long length of the barn. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, I just, uh, I've just put the glue on ready. So what I'm going to do now is just drop this piece in there. Um, yes, it's it's been a little bit of a, an awkward build to this build, but uh, yeah, I'm getting there. So there, yeah, so the mitres match on the corners. That's another thing. I've had to mate at each corner. I don't know if you can see that, but I've had to mate at each corner to get them to marry up with the edges on the radiuses. So that is that. That's done now. Just got to leave that to dry. And then we... I have now made a start on painting the framework. Um, my thinking is that when the barn went up, um, it was left in its red oxide state, which is uh, gives the steelwork its coating against rust. And uh, the farmer never got round to painting the steelwork. So that's my thinking there. And the colour I'm using is matte 100 to represent the red oxide paint. Obviously I will weather it, I will grime it down a bit and um, add some green um, mould as well. So yeah, that's what I'm doing now, just painting the steelwork in a red oxide. Right, so you're probably wondering, oh, what's he doing now? Well, we make lots of weird stuff on this channel, as you know. Um, <laughs> um, so what I'm doing here is um, I'm making some giant... Um, stacks of straw like you see in the barns and that so basically instead of making lots of little cubes I've made up uh, this um, little structure to stick the hay uh, straw bales to um, as you see I've got various heights there and um, the width of this is 30 mil um, you'll, you'll see this um, when we move further on in the build, uh, with building this, and that's six mil um, high, twelve mil and twelve mil. Um, yes, yeah, so basically, I'm going to make loads of these up, which is um, eight mil across, six mil in depth, and fourteen millimeters wide. These are going to be glued around this giant um, straw stack, uh, as you'll see. So that's what. Right, so I finished my um, straw stack uh, supporting structure, as it were. <laughs> um, all basically worked out for the size of the straw bales that I'm going to make. Um, I'm going with the standard three foot wide bales um, which are two foot deep and roughly about a foot and a half uh, tall. 
Now, if you Google it, um, straw bales come in various sizes. It depends on the machinery that the farm has got. So that's what I'm going to make. I'm going to make the three foot um, straw bales. So in order to do that, I'll glue these pieces of card together first. Um, right, so this is what I'm going to use for um, the actual straw. Uh, it's Pico um, static grass. Six millimeter straw. So I'm going to, do, I'm going to put some of this into this tub here. As you can see, it's quite fine. You'll probably get away with just. Right, once you get it all loosened up, you've got to loosen it all up because it comes out in clumps. Now I've already prepped um, my straw stack. Yeah, you probably noticed I've cut it down a little bit. And um, the reason being I was getting a bit ambitious with the size of stack that I wanted. It doesn't quite fit on the base, it's just too big. So the idea now is to I've cut one stack. This is the first sample. I'm just gonna put some PVA wood glue on a couple of sides and dab it in. Let's see how this works. And then just put it on. Yeah, leave that to dry. Notice I haven't painted the card at all. It's just an experiment, as it were, so I'm just pushing it over so that we've got enough room to put another one on that side. And I'll just build it up like bricks. Just push that that way a little bit more. Yeah, it's not too bad. I'll have to tamping it down a little bit when I get a few together on there. So as you can see I've built up one corner and um, you can actually see the individual um, straw stacks. But interesting to see what it looks like once it's dried. Yeah it's amazing how quick uh, this is going together now. Uh, in the odd instances, I'm having to use a little bit of um, glue, rocket car glue. But uh, on the whole, it's, it's looking okay. I think once it's all glued together, um, what I'll do is I'll just go around with the scissors and trim it back. But uh, yeah, we're getting there. What I have learned by doing this is to do the corners first. Cover that joint off first and then fill in with the smaller ones. Um, because I've noticed in a couple of instances I've had to um, trim the last one down but you not notice it but uh, it's just those things when you're doing something new um, you learn as you go along about 14 to 15 mil in between there and we just cut to suit make it little... right so we finally reached the top of this stack of straw bales and um, 
the lower half was done last night as you can see and that looks quite good and the top two rows is what I've just done um, so what I'll do is I'll wait until all of it's done and then I do what I did last night I just got a pencil and rolled the straw flat um, after about a uh, half an hour or so um, just to make sure that it sticks and what I like about this if you look close enough you can see the joints in the hay bales or straw bales as it were so yeah so we've reached the top so what I'm doing now I'm just going to fill in the top here with some 2 mil card but leave a gap and then we'll just we'll just put some glue over it and then just sprinkle the straw on top um, but right so as you can see I've um, filled in the top there with some card some 2 mil thing thick card just to bring it up level and I'm covering it all with some PVA wood glue and then once when this is done I shall just then turn this upside down and dip it into the hay that I've already got ready in here so I just dip it in there So it's still a bit bare in a few places, so I'll just sprinkle that on. Right, I'll just roll that flat. Just to help the scatter adhere to the PVA wood glue. Right, so we'll shall leave that for now. And um, once it's hardened a little bit, I shall just go around with uh, a screwdriver or something and just push the straw into the joints. But we'll just let that dry for a little bit first. Right, so let's move back on to the barn. <laughs> Looks like a slice of cake, doesn't it? Right, so I'm painting the roof uh, a satin black, but I'm not going overly heavy with the paint. I'm just streaking it on at the moment. Um, as you can see there, I'm not... Uh, painting the roof black as it were I'm just streaking it on because I want some of that white to come through uh, this stuff, this paint is really drying quick it's a satin black humbrel again So here we go with the green. I'm using a matte green, not a satin green like I said earlier. Um, so the, the black is still damp. So I just want to tone the shine down because it looks quite shiny at the moment. So let's just see how we get on with this. This building is so light it's just bouncing all over the place at the moment so just just to add this green just streaking it on yeah I quite like that it looks like it's um, been weathered quite a bit just using the edge of the tin necks don't want to mix the paints up
Right, so that's the roof done. Uh, it still looks glossy at the moment, so I'm hoping that with that matte paint on there, that will tone it down a little bit. Uh, as you noticed, I was going with the grain. Um, I didn't particularly want to fill the grain up. If I turn it this way around, you can still see the grooves in, in the roof. So we shall leave this to dry and we shall see what it looks like when it's dry. Now we're going to do a little bit of work to this base. I've already painted it in the dark grey. Um, which gives it the concrete look like we did when we did the farmyard so now we're just going to go over it again with some light grey um, paint number 126 satin and uh, we're just going to paint it on and then dab it off again like we did um, in the farmyard so there just going to spread this out a little bit and, um, and then just dab it with a bit of tissue so, you know, a bit more, bit more grey around in there and what I'll do then once this is done I will go around the outside with some PVA wood glue and add some green um, scatter to look like we've got weeds growing around the edges. Now I'm adding some green grass for around the edges. Um, I've put some PVA wood glue along the edges there but only on the edge not on the underside because I want this to sit flat when I come to put it um, on the baseboard so I'm just dabbing the edges in it doesn't matter if it goes over onto the um, concrete because it just adds to the detail right so I shall leave that to dry. So now I'm just adding some weathering powders just to highlight the lines that I scribed into these panellings. Um, I'm just using brown there, I don't know if the camera can pick it up so let's have a look, there you go. So I'm just trying to add a little bit of uh, brown rust but very very lightly yeah so it just seems to be picking it up quite well there you go that's a better view so I shall continue to do this and we shall see what it looks like when it's all done I have stuck this giant straw stack to the concrete base um, and it's, uh, it, it does look huge. Uh, so what we're going to do now is stick the barn as it were to it with some super glue and um, then we're going to see what it looks like on the layout but um, yeah I'm quite pleased with that so far. Yeah, it's, it's gonna. It's, it is quite. It almost takes up half the size of the barn, that haystack. So here we are, back at Snookdown Farm, but we're in the other yard. And um, what I'll do before I place the two buildings um, where they're gonna go, you can see where I've marked out the pencil lines where they're going to go so the pigsty is going to go there and the um, straw stack combine is going to go here so I've just given it a little bit of a rub down with some sandpaper to make sure that when I do 
finally put these buildings in place they're going to sit nice and flat and uh, we've got a triangular area there where I'm going to put some PVA wood glue down and put some bushes in and um, on this side here there's about an 8mm gap so I'm going to put some slabs along there and some slabs along there and just one slab in front of each gate here and here and then I'll paint the road in and try and blend it in with some um, acrylic paints uh, with tyre marks and potholes that sort of thing and then that should finish it off so we shall see what it looks like in a minute Meanwhile, down on the farm, things are coming together. I have now placed the barn and the pigsty in this yard. And, um, yep, I'm quite happy with those positions, and that's where they're going to stay. I think it's the right choice to put them there. Yeah, the greenery, uh, the stones and repainting the yard took about 30 minutes, so it didn't take that long and we couldn't really film that because it will make the video <laughs> nearly an hour or so long. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with the way that that is looking at the moment. You're probably wondering about the vehicles that I have here. Um, I got them off that famous site eBay. You may have seen them in the videos um, uh, because they were red and they were a bit battered so the tow hooks was hanging off one of them and um, there's a wheel missing well not missing but loose and I had to um, glue that back on and I've repainted them green and um, they do set the scene just having that little extra detail and um, looking at the farm at all different angles, it really does look like a working farm now. So we started off with the farmhouse, um, which took a few weeks. And then we did uh, the pigsty, which took a week. And now we've done the barn. Um, I'm quite pleased with the way that that haystack has come out. You can see virtually all the individual blocks if you look close enough. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. And we've also got a signpost here um, he's pointing towards the farm and then the town of course. <laughs> so yeah, every little detail helps as they say. So I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen this week. Um, it's been, it's been uh, an enjoyable build, the barn. Uh, I must admit, um, if I would, if I was to make another straw stack, I don't think I'd make it um, with individual blocks because it did take uh, a while to do. So, I think that is the end of the video for me. I think, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And uh, maybe next time we can start um, back over Jarrah Road because we've got a signal box to put in that gap. Um, but we shall see. So, thanks again for watching. And we'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Bye.